Hi, this is Katie from KT and the Squid. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the Haywood Cowl. So the Haywood Cowl is available for free on my website, and I'll link to where you can find that. You can also purchase the PDF if you'd like to print your patterns from Ravelry or Etsy. So this pattern, I would rate it as an intermediate pattern. Um, and I will say that this video is meant to go with the written pattern, so be sure to find the written pattern and follow along with that while you follow along with the video. So this is the Haywood cowl that I will be making in the video. So this cowl uses three colors. For my sample, I used Worsted Merino Superwash from Plymouth Yarns. These skeins are about 218 yards per skein, and like I said, I used three colors, so I used one skein of each. You don't quite need that much yardage. The original cowl was made with three skeins that were 181 yards each, so if you get probably around 200 yard skeins, and you have three colors, that should be enough. In the video, I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook from Ofire Co, and I'll link to where you can get this hook from her shop. Be sure to make your gauge swatch. I did make a gauge swatch with this hook to make sure I had the correct gauge. If you're not sure how to make a gauge swatch, I will link to a video that may be helpful. So like I said, this pattern is rated more of an intermediate crochet pattern. I wouldn't recommend this for super beginners because there is some shaping as you can see and a lot of color changes happening and that might be a little bit tricky for a super beginner. In the video I'm only going to show you how to work the cowl for the first couple of color blocks and then from there on it's um, it, it the pattern repeats pretty similarly, but like I said, you do need to follow along with that pattern. So before we get started, I do want to explain kind of how this comes together. So this is the cowl. Um, you can see it opens up here, and this is the top that goes around your neck, and then this point kind of hangs down on your chest. This cowl will be worked flat, and I will insert a clip of it here shown flat before it seamed together to give you an idea of how it comes together. So what we'll do is we will start here. And what's happening is on this side we're decreasing, which is giving us that diagonal. And then here you see there's a line going here where there's increasing happening to make this V. So there's an increase on this side and then there's an increase on this side which creates that V effect. So in the pattern you want to pay attention to the striping. So in the free version of the cowl I have written out the striping instructions before the instructions for the cowl starts. So be sure to take a look at that and take note of the striping instructions. If you purchase a PDF I have also included a spreadsheet at the very bottom of the pattern and the spreadsheet tells you what color every row should be. So if you're on row 45 you can go look at the spreadsheet and see I should be on color C. So if you find, if you think that might be helpful, be sure to purchase the PDF. Also on that PDF I've given you stitch counts for every single row. I didn't write it all out for the free pattern because there's a lot of repeating and I didn't write out every single uh, row. So just to go over the striping, we're going to start here and you're going to do two rows of color A, two rows color B, and you'll repeat that four times. And then you're going to do two rows of color C, two rows of color B, and repeat that three times. And then it's two rows of color A, two rows of color C, and you repeat that three times and add another row, another two rows of color C, and then you repeat that throughout. So let's grab our yarn and get started. So we're going to start with colors A and B. And to begin, we are going to chain 32 with color A. Row one, you're going to single crochet into the second chain from your hook and then single crochet into every chain across and that'll give you a total of 31 stitches. So 
So once you've finished row one, you're going to take your stitch marker and you are going to put it on stitch number two of row one. So one, two. And then it's important to remember every time you work a new row, you need to move the stitch marker up to the corresponding stitch. So the stitch that you put into this marked stitch, you need to take this stitch marker out and then put it into that new stitch. So for row two, you're going to chain one and turn, and then you are going to single crochet into this first stitch, and you're going to skip the next stitch, and single crochet into the next stitch. Then you'll single crochet into every stitch until you get to one stitch before that marked stitch. So here I am one stitch before that marked stitch. Next you're going to work two single crochets into this next stitch. And then you'll work one single crochet into that marked stitch and then uh, you can move this stitch marker now if you'd like or you can wait until you finish off the row and then move it off or move it up. Um, I just move it as I come to it so I don't forget and then you will work two single crochets in that last stitch. So every even row is going to be very similar to that. You'll start the row with a single crochet and then a decrease, so you'll skip one stitch. And then you'll work until you get to your marked stitch. You'll increase one on either side of the marked stitch, and then you'll single crochet to the end of the row. That's basically what every even row is going to be. Rows two and four are just a little bit different until you get to row six and then you re repeat row six for every even row. So since I'm at the end of row two I actually didn't want to finish off that stitch. So since I did two rows of color A now I need to switch to color B. So to change colors what I do is I work to the very last step of that last stitch and then I'll grab my next color and I will just complete the stitch with the new color. Just like that. And then row four, you're gonna chain, or row three, you're gonna chain one and turn and then you're just going to single crochet into every stitch across. Remember when you get to that marked stitch to move that stitch marker up or you can move it up after you finish the whole row. It's up to you. And then I'll just single crochet all the way across and I'll show you row four. Here's what it looks like after row three. I also want to say that you don't need to fasten off at all for this cowl because it's worked, uh, the color striping is worked in even rows. All of your color changes are gonna be on this side. At the end of the cowl, you're going to cover that up with a row of trim, so you won't see any of the floats, but you wanna make sure that they're not too tight or too loose. Uh, I didn't fasten off on this one at all, and you can't even tell. So just be mindful that you're not making those floats too tight or too loose. So row four is similar to row two. You're going to chain one and turn. You'll single crochet into the first stitch. Skip one and then single crochet into the next stitch and then you'll single crochet all the way down until you get to one stitch before that marked stitch. Also, every even row of this cowl is going to add one stitch. So again, one stitch before the marked stitch. Mark two single crochets. Single crochet into the marked stitch and move that stitch marker up if you'd like. And 
and then two single crochets into the next stitch and then single crochet into that last stitch. Again, what we're doing on every even row is we start with a decrease at the beginning of the row and then you add two increases on either or you add one increase on either side of the marked stitch. So that's a total of two increases. So it's a total of one stitch increased for the whole row. So I need to go back because we are changing colors. Um, so your skeins are going to start to get tangled up. So just be mindful. And what I like to do is I just kind of flip them over just to kind of keep things manageable. They're going to get tangled. It just happens. Just try to manage it before it gets too out of control. So I'm going to complete that stitch with the new color. And again here I'm being careful not to make that float too tight or too loose. I just kind of give the sides a little bit of a tug and leave it where it naturally lays. So now row five is where the fun starts. This is where we get our pattern or our spike stitches. So I said what the spike single crochet is at the beginning of the pattern, but I'll show you in a second here and that's what creates the uh, it creates these kind of dip downs and that'll start on row five. So row five you're going to chain one and turn and then you will single crochet into the first three again don't forget to move that stitch marker up when you get to it next you're going to do your spiked single crochet into the next stitch so it's actually going to be my marked stitch so I'll have to end up moving my stitch marker up after I do this. So for the spike stitch, instead of inserting my hook into that next stitch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook into the stitch two rows below. So it's going to meet where the other green row of yarn is. So I'll insert my hook right there. Hopefully you can see that because it's uh, the yarn's a little dark. But I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pull that up so that that stitch meets the top of all the, the, the row so that it's not too tight. And then I'm going to complete the single crochet like normal. So I'll yarn over and pull through too. And that is a spiked stitch. So I'm going to move my stitch marker up. Then I'm going to single crochet into the next three and make sure you're not working into this stitch that you leave alone. So I'll single crochet into the next three. And then I'll work another spiked stitch. Just make sure you keep kind of a loose hand so that you're not doing it too tight. And then it's just three single crochet and spike stitch all the way across. So you'll work a spike stitch then three single crochet all the way across until you have two stitches left. So I finished the repeat. I have two stitches left, so I will work a spike stitch into the next stitch and then a single crochet into that last stitch. And then this is what it looks like at the end of row five. So row six is what is going to be your repeat for every even row from now on. So you'll chain one turn single crochet into the first, skip one, and then single crochet into every stitch until you get to one stitch before that marked stitch. Two single crochets into the next stitch, 
single crochet into the marked stitch and move your marker up. And then two single crochets into the next stitch. And then single crochet into every remaining stitch. So that is the repeat of row six, and that's gonna be the same for every even row from now on. So every time I get to a repeat of row six, I'm just gonna say work row six, and that's what that is. For row seven, you'll change back to row, color B. And then row seven is a repeat of row three, which is just single crochet all the way across. And then the returning row is gonna be a repeat of row six. So row eight is an even row, so it's gonna be a returning row of uh, row six. So I'll do both of those and show you what to do next. Here I am at the end of row eight. Now a little, something that might be kind of helpful. If you're forgetting which, when you're working a row of, a repeat of row six, what you can do is, so I just worked a repeat of row six and this side of the work was facing me. So what you can do is you can pop a stitch marker in and then you know every time this stitch marker is facing you while you're working, it's a repeat of row six and that's just an easy way to remind yourself. So row nine, we're going to change back to color A and I'm going to untangle. So we'll chain one and turn and now row nine is very similar to row five. The only thing is these spike stitches are going to be off set. So there'll be a spike stitch in between these two here, in between these two here. So you're going to single crochet into the first stitch and then spike stitch into the next. So my spike is gonna go here. And then it's, it's the same repeat as row five but because I started with one single crochet at the beginning, it's gonna be, the pattern's gonna be offset. So I'll single crochet into the next three. And then I'll spike into this one. So this one, as we're rounding the corner, is going to line up and that's just the way it happens. Um, but because there's increasing going on here from, from here on, they'll be offset. So um, remember to move your stitch marker up. And then you'll single crochet into the next three. And you'll see, so the next spike stitch goes here and you'll see that'll be in the middle of these two because we're rounding that corner. That's why those ones line up. So then you'll single crochet into the next three and then spike stitch. And then single crochet into the next three and you'll repeat that all the way across until you have uh, two stitches left. So there I have two stitches left. I'll spike stitch into the next stitch and then single crochet into the last. So as you know, I'm at an even row. So when I turn this, that stitch marker is facing me. So I'm going to do a repeat of row six and then I will change back to color B and I'll do my once I'll do single crochet all the way across and then another repeat of row six. So I worked row 10, which was our repeat of row six. And then I just finished up the color sequencing 
for this section because it's just a repeat of rows we've already done and I didn't see the point in showing those again. So I did row 10, uh, row 11 was all single crochet, row 12 was an even row, row 13 is a repeat of row 5, so we've already done that. And as you can see, the spike stitches are offset from row 9. And then I did a uh, row 14, which is even. And then row 15 is single crochet. And then 16, of course, is an even row. So for row 17, it's time to pick up color C. So row 17 will be all single crochet. And then, of course, 18 will be the repeat of row 6. So I'll do both of those. And then we'll do row 19 which will have spike stitches with color B. So every time you pick up a new color and the color sequencing changes there's going to be these two rows where there's no spike stitches. So just keep that in mind every time that you are changing the color sequencing. So for row 19 you're going to pick up color B and row 19 is going to be similar to the other spike stitch rows. So you'll chain one and turn, single crochet into the first three, very similar to what we did before, spike stitch into the next. Now what is going to happen, and you'll notice this more once the cowl gets bigger, is when you change the color sequencing, the spike stitches on this side of the stitch marker are going to line up, but once you cross the stitch marker, then they'll be staggered again. So, um, so you spike stitch and then you'll single crochet into the next three. And you'll repeat that all the way across until you have one stitch left. Here I am at the end of row 19. I finished the last three single crochet and then normally it would be a spike stitch but I didn't want to end the row on a spike stitch so I'm going to single crochet into that last stitch. So of course row 20 is going to be a return pass working an even uh, repeat row of six and then row 20 will be similar to row 9 here where the spike stitches will be offset from row 19. So I'm going to go ahead and work until it's time for me to drop color B and pick up color A again. Again, all these rows are written out in the pattern and you should be following along with the pattern. Uh, but I'll show you what it looks like when it's time for me to pick up color A again. I just finished row 30 and this is what it looks like. I'm getting ready to pick up color A again and then I will stripe between color A and color C. But this is basically what will happen for the rest of the cowl. Every time you kind of change the striping there's going to be a little bit of a blank space here where there's no spike stitches. So that's where I am right here. And really, as you're working, just pay attention to the repeat of row 6 where you're adding your increase and your decrease here. And pay attention to when you need to change colors. And that's basically it. So I'm just going to keep working and then I will show you how to finish up your cowl. So here is the body of my cowl all stitched up and it looks a little funny but I'm going to show you how it all comes together. At this point your cowl is probably super curly and probably doesn't lay nice and flat like mine does. I just did a quick steaming on my cowl because I wanted to show you what it looks like. You don't have to steam it until you're completely done. We still have the trim and the seaming to do, but I just did that so that you could get a full visual of what it looks like. So what I've done per the instructions of the pattern, I fastened off color, um, I believe this is color, color C and color B, but I still have color A attached because that's what our trim is going to be. So we're going to work a row of single crochets down the ends of these rows here. It's the side where your yarn should be attached. So what I'm going to do is 
because I fastened off, I pulled that through the last stitch. I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to go to the last step of this last stitch, just like I'm changing colors like normal. And I'll just redo that. So I'm at the last step of my last stitch of the last row and I'm going to join with color A, which should be right here um, on the end of your cowl. And then I'm going to chain one and instead of turning, I'm going to be working the trim down the side. So the instructions say to work five single crochets per every six rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to single crochet one into every row and then um, so I'll do five and then I'll skip one. So I'll skip the sixth row and then work five, skip one. So here when you're working into the ends, be sure to grab the floats that are also um, hanging out on the end of your cowl. That's three, four, five rows, so then I'll skip the sixth. And you can see um, I've hidden my floats in that trim. Hopefully you can see that. So I'll skip one, and that's one, two, three, four, five, and then I will skip one row. And one, two, four, five. And I'll just continue that all the way down for the trim. And you can see all my floats are hidden inside of that trim. Um, and I also want to say it doesn't really matter where you kind of insert your hook into the end of the rows. As long as you keep it consistent all the way down, just go into the, a similar spot in every row so that it looks nice and neat. That's really all that matters. Um, so yeah, I will continue all the way down and then I'll show you how to seam the whole thing together. So here I am at the bottom of the trim. So next we're going to seam the cowl together. So the way this is going to work is this is our beginning chain. And then our last row is right here where I have my stitch marker. And so since this is at a diagonal, this last chain is going, the first chain is going to be uh, seamed to the last row. So this will fold over and be seamed like that. So I left my stitch marker, so be sure to leave your stitch marker until you're ready to seam because you will need that as a land marker of where to start. So I haven't fastened off, I still have my yarn attached. And make sure that your uh, wrong side is facing out. And an easy way, the, the first row is a wrong side row, so the right side of that row should be facing you right now. Also, an easy way to tell is this trim is a right side row, so that should be on the inside. See how that's on the inside? And then I'll seam with it facing out like this. So we're going to start our seam one stitch before this stitch marker. Simply all we're going to do is slip stitch the last row to the first chain. So I'm just going to go ahead and insert my hook into that that stitch before the stitch marker and then into my first chain and work a slip stitch. And then I'll just go all the way across. If you accidentally took your stitch marker out, all you need to do is count 31 stitches and that's where you should start. So I'm going to slip stitch this all together and then I'll show you how to finish off the last part of the trim. So 
I finished my trim and we can go ahead and get rid of that stitch marker. We don't need that anymore and I'll show you how nicely that came together. And you can see we have a nice diagonal going here. So this is the top of the cowl that will go around your neck and then this point will hang down on your chest. So now to finish this, all we're gonna do is work a round of single crochet around the opening of the cowl. So this is our wrong side, so just make sure you turn so that you're working with the right side facing out so your single crochets are facing the right side, the right way. And it's the same, we're just gonna work single crochet the same way that we did up the side of the cowl, so one single crochet for, ev or sorry, five single crochets for every six rows. So I'll go ahead and work my finishing round of single crochets and I'll show you how it looks all finished. So that's the end of my trim on the top and then I'll just flip this around. And that's the finished cowl. I'll probably do a quick little steam blocking just to even out the trim and flatten down this seam a little bit, but that's the finished cowl. So here I'll insert some photos of the cowl being worn so you can see how it all comes together and what it looks like when it's on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channels. I share all kinds of crochet tutorials as well as yarn and other product reviews related to crochet. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.